everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, M. Graham Sews. This video tutorial is for this really gorgeous little bag called the Prada Nylon Re-Edition Inspired Bag by Toby Stylix Bag Pattern. And just like all of Toby's other patterns, it may look like a difficult sew. I promise it's not, and it's surprisingly a really quick sew. So before we get discussing the features of, of the bag, there are a couple things I wanted to mention. And the first thing is, this is filmed like a sew along. So there are no parts that are sped up, no parts that are cut out. You see me do everything on camera. The only time I don't show everything on camera is if there's things that we have to sew, you know, two, three, four times, I will go off camera and sew those second, third, and fourth things. So I'll show you how to do it once and then I'll go off camera and sew the rest. The other thing I wanted to mention is I don't give any measurements, show no pattern pieces, no rulers, no cutting mats, nothing on camera. And that's for the protection of the designer, but also because I film during testing, so oftentimes things can change and I don't want it to affect my tutorial. So you will need to have the pattern open either printed or on another device so that you can follow along and be able to make the bag. Now let's discuss some of the features of the bag. First of all, you're going to notice that there's a chain here on the front and we have a tassel. Nice decorative features, but this chain does serve another purpose to be able to use this as a handbag. So it really adds that extra fancy feature. You do have a shoulder strap, which also has these shoulder strap connectors. It's great because you don't have to worry about finishing off your webbing because it's all concealed inside this shoulder strap connector. I did add a rivet, you can add a rivet too, it's not in the pattern but I did add a rivet again just for some extra bling because I really like how it looks. There is a zipper closure, now this bag comes with two types of closures, the one will be where the zippers go all the way from end to end and that is if you have a machine that can handle bulk, that zipper would be good for you to make but if your machine can't handle bulk, this is the zipper that you want to do because it doesn't go all the way from end to end, it stops at the ends, just away from the ends, sorry. And it does still open up nice and wide, but you don't have it up here in the ends where all this bulk will be. I do walk you through how to sew that zipper and then I show you how to do this one just so you know how to do it. So again, the bag does open wide and it's got enough room for your wallet, your phone, anything you need to put in this little bag for a day out. You also have a zipper pocket, so say you want to put your keys in here because you want your keys extra secure, your keys could go in there. And it does have a zipper pocket overlay. You could add another zipper pocket onto the other side so you can have another pocket to put things in that you don't really want loose in the bottom of your bag. This is your bag, so make it the way you want. As I was mentioning, with the piping, you could do a panel, you can do embroidery, anything you want. You can make this out of quilting cotton, vinyl, make it dressy, make it casual, whatever you want. Because this is a quick sew, it's also a great bag if you've got craft markets coming up because you can make so many of them and they could all look so different and people will really like them because they've got this wow factor to it. It's such a gorgeous bag and I really enjoyed making it. I just, I love it. I think it's beautiful. So let's get started making our Prada Nylon Re-Edition Inspired Bag by Toby Stylix Bag Pattern. So the very first thing you want to do is read through the entire pattern. This is very important because oftentimes designers give information regarding different interfacings you can use or maybe different materials you're using. Sometimes pattern pieces need to be cut a little bit different. So you'll want to read through the pattern and make note of that before you start cutting your pattern pieces. Also, it familiarizes you with the construction of the bag so that you know how it's going to come together and that can help you determine what materials to use as well. Once you've read through the entire pattern, you can go ahead and start cutting out your pattern pieces just like I did here. I'm using a soft vinyl and a quilting cotton for this bag. You can use whatever materials you know your machine can handle. Also use a needle and thread that your machine likes because that's very important. You know your machine, so always use materials, interfacings that your machine can handle. I am using foam and Decoville Heavy on my gusset. So again, I'm using those, but definitely use what is best for you. I've gathered all my hardware and I like to put it in this little bag with my zipper and my webbing and my piping and this is just so that it all stays together and I don't lose anything. I just find it's a little bit easier. Sometimes I drop things on the floor and then one of the cats comes over and plays with it so this just keeps it all together and easy for me to find. Another thing I've gone and done is I've made marks and made cuts where I need to make cuts. 
So for example, the tassel, you need to cut it so it becomes a tassel and there's markings and places where you need to cut. So I've gone ahead and done that. Also cut out the opening for my zipper overlay. And the other thing I like to do is mark the center points on all my pattern pieces. So you'll see here, I have the center points marked and I've also marked what letter this is or what the pattern piece in is, pattern piece is. And the reason is that that just makes it easy when we get to the step in the pattern, I know exactly which pattern piece I need. Sometimes patterns have a lot of similar shapes or similar sizes and it makes it a little bit confusing when you're trying to figure out what piece to use. So it's just really good to go ahead and mark your pieces. You can use painter's tape, masking tape, uh, sticky notes, whatever you want. I just write directly on the back on my foam on what it is. Sometimes I use painter's tape depending on the material. So once you have everything cut out, interfaced, all your markings made that you want to make, we are ready to get started on our bag. The first thing we're going to do is construct our zipper pocket and for this we need one of our lining panels, our two zipper pocket pieces and our zipper overlay. I'm just going to place those to the side. Now in the pattern there's a mark that you need to make from the top of this curved edge down for how far we're going to place this zipper overlay. So it's hard to see my mark, actually that kind of stuck so maybe we can do it like this. So I've already made the mark. That's how it's going to go. So you want to make your mark across and you want this to be centered. So once you've made your mark, we'll take some double sided tape. And I'm going to place it on the back of my overlay. just putting some double sided tape on the back of my overlay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the paper backing there's a little thread caught there and to make sure it's centered what I've got here is a crease in my a crease in my lining but what you do is just fold it in half lining up your side edges and then just crease it so finger press it just like that open it back up and that creates that crease down the center. You can do the same thing with your overlay, fold it directly in half, give it a press with your fingers, and then you'll line up the center of the overlay with your center crease and you'll line up the top of the overlay with that mark you made. So just like that. So my centers are here, and the top of my overlay is at the top of that, is right under that line I drew. Now we're going to stitch around the outside edge of this overlay. So all the way around. Now if you're like me and you don't want back stitching to be seen on your overlay, what you can do is leave long thread tails and just start stitching with no back stitching. to where I started so I'm going to pull my thread tails out of the way and I'm going to stitch until I'm back where I started right back in that hole if you have to use a shorter stitch length go ahead and use that shorter stitch length to get right in that first hole you started in now on the back side we have two threads and on the front side we have two what I do is I just give a little pull of the front threads or the back threads and that causes this little loop to come up and then I just put my scissors or my awl or my um, seam ripper into that little loop that cr was created and it pulls them all the way through. So now you have four on the back side and you just knot them together. And this just has it so that there's no back stitching at all, especially if you're using something like a solid print vinyl where you will see the back stitching. If you're using a vinyl that has a print on it and it's going to mask the back stitching, then go ahead and back stitch. It won't be seen as much. Sometimes if I'm using a thread that really matches, so like 
uh, a white on a white um, vinyl or black or even this I probably could have gotten away with the back stitching because it is a pretty um, busy vinyl not busy but there's a lot of color in it so you wouldn't have noticed it as much but for this tutorial I wanted to show you that now that is attached we've stitched all around the outer edge next we need to create that hole for where our zipper is going to go so I just use my seam ripper to start a hole and then I cut down the center of this hole so right down the center of where that zipper opening is you can see in the center of this box flip it over and with my duckbill scissors I'm going to cut all around that opening and the opening doesn't have to be pretty so don't worry if it doesn't look all neat and tidy or straight no one's going to see this because your zipper pocket is going to be sewn over this where nobody will see it just cut that opening out now be careful you don't cut your stitches or cut any of your overlay that's why I like the duckbill scissors I just find that it prevents me from cutting oh, I can't put that away I can't see what I'm doing it prevents me from cutting where I don't want to so it protects the back side of the fabric or the other side of the fabric. So that's how it looks. We have this opening right now. Put that off to the side. We're going to grab our zipper for our zipper pocket. Put your pull on if it's a zipper that you're using that doesn't already have a pull on it. Go ahead and put your zipper pull on. I'll link to a video below in the description for how I put a pull on my zipper when I'm using this zipper tape. Now what we need to do is take one of our zipper pocket pieces and lay it right side up. Then we're going to place our zipper right side up on top of it. So the wrong side of your zipper is against the pretty side of your fabric. Clip it in place along the top edge. Just like that. And now I'm going to baste across that top edge. When I get to where my zipper pull is, I'm just going to zip it out of the way. And that just helps keep the zipper nice and flat because where that zipper pull is, it causes a bit of a bump. So that just helps keep it nice and flat and straight. It also helps with not having a wavy zipper. Wavy zippers can still happen, but it just helps prevent that. Now I'm going to take this panel and I'm going to press it away from the zipper. Just like that press it away from the zipper you can take this to your iron if you want to give it a really good press but I'm just going to press it like that now we need to grab this second zipper pocket piece and we're going to place this panel with the zipper attached again zipper wrong sides against the right side of the zipper pocket make sure your side edges here line up clip it in place at the top edge and then we're going to sew across that top edge again basting it in place and again, when I get to where that zipper pull is, I'm going to zip that out of the way so that I don't hit it and also to remove the little bump that it causes. So there it is. I'm going to zip this out of the way. Cut all your threads. I just need to move my pedal sorry there we go. It's slipping away on me it's trying to run away I'm going to press this panel again away from the zipper and I'm just giving it a finger press just like that so now we have the panels attached to our zipper and it does look a little bit wonky because we're seeing the right side of the zipper with the wrong sides of the panels but that's correct because when we put this on and we have it all closed up you're going to be looking inside the zipper pocket now what we need to do is place this with it open and the zipper the right side of the zipper looking at you add some double-sided tape along the top long edge and bottom long edge of the zipper so along those long edges <clears throat> 
And then we're going to center this inside that zipper overlay opening. So we'll move, remove the paper backing of the double-sided tape. And if you don't have double-sided tape, I used to use masking tape. So I'd lay this flat on the table. I'd find where it goes and I'd use masking tape. Just be careful with your vinyl because some tape will uh, rip the vinyl or not rip it, but remove some of the coloring, I guess you could say, damage your vinyl. So you want to be very careful. So we're going to center this. And you're centering it so the zipper is centered in the hole. So have it centered in that zipper opening. Just like that. So now it's centered in that opening. Now I want to keep my top one clipped out of the way for now. I don't want it to fall down. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to stitch along this bottom edge here, starting and stopping at the measurement given in the pattern. So I'm going to stitch just along the bottom edge of the zipper and I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave long thread tails so I don't have that back stitching again. Stitch right along the bottom of the zipper. Long thread tails. Pull them through to the back. Same thing that we did earlier. You just find the little loop and pull it up through to the back and then tie them off. tying it off. If you're concerned that your knots will come undone, you can add a dab of fray stop or fray check or even a bit of glue if you want. I've never had my knots come undone. Just be careful too as you're tying them not to pull. I mean you want to pull tight but not too tight because the threads can break and then what happens when they break is you can't tie the knots so you have to undo all that stitching so you'd have to unpick it and then restitch that whole thing. While it's not the end of the world, it's just a little bit more time consuming. So I just knotted a few times. I've never had my knots or anything come undone when I've done this. Alright, so I'm removing those clips. That's how it looks on the right side so far. That bottom edge is stitched. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip the pocket down. And I'm going to clip it in place along the side edges for now. Just like that. Now we need to stitch up the side across this top edge and back down the other side. And again, leave long thread tails, start and stop in the same hole you started or stopped in previously. started in so I just pulled it through or left long thread tails pulling them through to the back and I'm going to tie them off again. You don't have to do this you can definitely back stitch if you want. It's also inside the lining of the bag so sometimes I'm just like eh, I'll back stitch because it's not going to get seen. I 
did exactly what I said I didn't want to do, which was I pulled too tight and I broke my thread. So I'm going to show you what I do when this happens, how I fix that. So what I do is I just unpick a few of the stitches. I go back a few stitches, keep unpicking them until you're, you know, got enough thread. And that's what I meant by not pulling too hard on your threads. I think I have enough. I can make a little knot. So I'm going to pull these through to the back. I'm going to tie these off. And I'm going to be careful not to pull too hard again. And what I'll do is I'll start exactly where I've stopped the stitches here, where I've stopped removing them. I'll start in that same hole and I'll continue stitching on. And then it just looks like one continuous stitch and nobody ever knows that you accidentally broke your thread or anything. It just looks like it was one straight line of stitching. And you can do this anywhere that this happens to you. Even if you're stitching, say, a strap and you accidentally, you know, stop, your thread runs out or your bobbin runs out or you accidentally break your thread somehow. This is a great way to fix that little issue. So I'm being careful to go back into the same stitch holes too because I can see the stitching holes here. And I stopped right back in the stitch that I stopped in. And I'm going to pull these through to the back and just tie them off and you'll never know. So again, tying them off. I'll pause the video so you don't have to sit here and watch me do this and it's not so long. So I'll pause the video and then I'll come back and we will continue on with our bag. So I've gone ahead and tied those all off. Now we're ready to continue on with our zipper pocket. So still with it clipped on the sides, we need to trim this down here so it's the same length normally but I'm going to leave that because you'll notice that this zipper pocket is longer than our bag so we're going to stitch down the sides first so move your lining panel out of the way and stitch down the sides of your zipper pocket and you really only have to start under here where you stop stitching because this here closed up the gap so you really only have to stop where your stitching stopped or start sorry where your stitching stopped for stitching on that overlay all the way down, back, stop, back stitching at start and stop, leave the bottom of the zipper pocket unsewn, just like that. So you want to leave the bottom of the zipper pocket unsewn, but we need to trim this so it is the same length here as our pocket so it's not in the way when our you don't have this extra bulk at the bottom when your bag is completed because then your pocket's going to turn like this so we need to trim this zipper pocket so it's the same length as our panel so just using your panel as your guide just trim it around now you have cut those stitches so now what I like to do is go back and restitch over those bottom stitches so that they don't come out like that and all I'm doing is just stitching right over those previous stitches and I'm locking them in it doesn't look as pretty but it locks them in and now our pocket looks like this you can open it up and you have the opening at the bottom so you do want that opening to stay there because that's how we're going to turn the bag after cut all your threads so you have no peekaboo threads later and put this panel off to the side moving along we need to do our piping so you'll take your two piping panels 
and you will need your pipe cord, the piping cord, for these steps. So the first thing you need to do is draw, an end, draw a line on the end going up from the bottom, and there's a mark that you'll need to make, so you'll see I did it here on this one, on all edges, so from the short edge over on all of both of these. Then you'll mark a line down the center, and you'll do that on both of these as well. Next, we're going to use some double-sided tape. If you want, you can use fabric glue. I'm going to use the double-sided tape. And your piping cord may look a little bit different, and that's okay. This is the one I had on hand, so it was what I, it's what I'm going to use for this tutorial. Alright, so once you have the double-sided tape or your glue along the center, remove the paper backing. We're then going to align this piping cord, and I need to cut that, there's something sticking off this. We're going to align that piping cord down that center mark we made on top of the glue or your double-sided tape, whatever you chose to use, all along the center. And if your piping is like mine and it's a bit too long, go ahead and trim it. Sometimes I cut mine a bit longer than the pattern just to make sure that it'll fit. I'm using the wrong scissors for this. Not a good idea. Just making it right. All right, so I have that all along. And I'm going to repeat that for this one just to get it done. So again, between those marks is where you're putting your piping, and I think it's because I stretch my piping a bit while I'm laying it flat, so that's probably why it's a bit long. Alright, so now my piping is attached to the center, that's exactly what you want. Now we need to fold the long edges of the fabric over the piping, just like that. So you're going to fold it over the piping so that it is enclosed. And what you can do too here is use some fabric glue or you can use some double-sided tape. I'm going to use some double-sided tape. All along the edge. I'm going to do that on both of these. Remove my paper backing, and I'm going to fold the long edges so they meet, and closing that piping cord in the middle. And I'm just using my nail to really press it over. She has it shown in the pattern that she uses a ruler, but as you know, I don't like to show any measuring tools or anything in my tutorials, so I'm just using my finger to really press this in place. So I'm going to repeat that for this one. Fold it over, get everything all lined up, and 
And again, I'm just going to use my hands to press it over. There we go. All right, so now we have the piping done. I'm going to switch to a zipper foot. And this is just so that I can get nice and close to the edge of my piping without stitching over it. You can use a piping foot if you have one. Now we need to grab one of our main panels and we're going to place this piping along the edge of the main panel. So raw edges aligned. I'm going to find the center mark of my piping and I'm going to line up that center mark with the center mark on my panel. And I'm going to flip it all the way around. All around the curves. about the clips being loud. Now when we get up to the top here you can move it so it goes off the edge of your fabric just like that. You want you don't want this to be up here and then there's nothing. You want this to come off the edge of your fabric where that piping stops, or piping cord, sorry. You can also make little snips in the curves if you feel like you need them. I think with this soft vinyl I'm getting a really good curve. I don't need to snip into the curves just yet. I will when I go to attach the gusset. So right where that piping stops is where I'm turning this to come off the edge of the panel. So now I'm going to attach this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again, right where that piping comes up off the edge of the bag is, or right where that piping stops, the piping cord, is where I have this come up off the edge of the bag. So, so all the way around using the seam allowance given in the pattern. piping cord ends, so I'm going to make sure this comes off the edge, and it'll look just like that when you have it stitched in place. So I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to repeat that for the second one, and then I'll come back and we will continue on with constructing our bag. So my piping is attached to both my panels, now we need to cut this excess off the edges here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you just trim it so that it follows the shape of the main panel. Just like that. Throw those away. And we have our piping attached to both our panels. Moving right along, we need to make our main zipper. Now, there are two different methods for this. And I'm going to use the alternative method B because I'm trying to make this as domestic machine friendly. Your machine may not be able to handle bulk in the seams, but mine, I know on my industrial or this one, it could, but just for this purpose to make this very um, domestic friendly, I'm going to go with the alternative B. However, I'll just quickly walk you through if you're doing the other method. You would divide your zipper into two, so you'd have it into two pieces, and you would place one so it is right sides together and clip it all the way along this curved edge. Once you have it clipped all the way along the curved edge, you'll sew it in place with the seam allowance given in the pattern. You'll then repeat that for the second lining pan or main panel. Then you'll place your lining panel on top, sandwiching it in between and stitch that with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And that's how you'll do that one. But because I'm doing the second one, I'm going to show you what to do. So I'm going to remove my zipper pull for now. I'm going to put it in my little baggie of goodies. <clears throat> I'm going to 
going to separate my zipper tape just like it shows in the pattern and in the pattern there's a mark you need to make from the top edge of your zipper down on both sides of the zipper tape so both halves so I've already gone ahead and done that now what you need to do is grab your pins because we're going to pinch it at that mark we made so pinch it so they become wrong sides together the zipper will be wrong sides together like that and then you're going to hold it where you've pinched it and the mark where you've pinched it will now go under the teeth so it turns it at a 90 degree angle like that and I have a video tutorial on my YouTube channel so you can pause this and find it in the description below for how to do this I go into a bit more detail but again fold this down at that mark so it is wrong sides together hold where you made that mark and bring those zipper teeth so they come over where that fold is and it turns your zipper teeth on a 90 degree angle place a pin and then we're going to stitch these edges here so that they don't move the zipper doesn't move it holds it in place and what we're doing here is creating a new zipper stop on this end of the zipper tape because once your pull is on you don't want to lose it you don't want it to slide off need to create that zipper stop. I'm trimming all my threads and that's how they look when they are done. I'm just going to move my pins out of the way. Now with one of your main panels you're going to take your zipper tape and place it so it is Add a measurement from the top corner here over so there's a measurement given in the pattern for how far over this is going to go so I've already made those marks you can see them on my panel here and I'm going to place the end of my zipper tape so it is right sides down so I'm going to place this side where the teeth are turned at a 90 degree angle lining it up with that line pin it in place all the way around and it's going to be on a curve, so allow it to curve. Just like that. So now we're going to base this in place between those two marks we made and allowing it to curve as well. Oh, I thought my machine, I thought something was wrong with my machine. It was my scissors against the hand wheel. mark is I like to pull my zipper tape down so I sew right up to that mark but I'm also pulling my zipper tape down at that mark so that it when I go to attach my lining panel it's already veering down towards the bottom of the bag place that one to the side now we need to attach the second side and I want to make sure that my zipper is going to be in the same direction so opening and closing so the long tail is on the same side and the 90 degree angle edge is on the same side and to do that I just put these two panels together like this and I see that this is where the teeth are on this side and this is where the tail is so I know that that's where that one needs to go for the opposite side so again zipper right side together with the main panel I know that that's the opening side here and this is the tail end so those are the ends I want it to be on so I've clipped it at that mark and then I just continue clipping it in place all the way around that curve.
So now we're going to sew this again. We're going to baste this in place along that curved edge. Again, following the curve. And if you have a stiletto, you can use a stiletto here if you find it's helpful. Just be careful if you're like me and using your hands to hold everything. You don't want to sew over a finger. So I'm approaching that mark here that I've made. And again, I'm just veering my zipper down off the edge of my fabric at that mark. Just like that. So now again, when we put our panels together, your zipper opens and closes on the same side. When we put the zipper back together, you're going to see it opens and closes on the same side. And the method again that we're using here is just because if your machine has a hard time with bulk, because if you go all the way to the edge, it's going to add a lot of bulk there. So this just helps prevent all that extra bulk. Now that we have both of those done, take this and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip this down against my piping just to help hold it out of the way, just like that. Now we need to take one of the main lining panels and we're going to place it right sides together with the right side of the main exterior panel. So the zipper is sandwiched in between, clip up at the corners and then clip it the rest of the way. And you can check and see if your center markings line up, which mine do. And then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And for now, I think I'll be okay with my regular foot. Hopefully. It's a bit, this one here, my Teflon foot seems to be a little bit thinner than my other foot. So I'm going to switch to that. Don't forget to backstitch it, start and stop. So where this zipper is coming down, I'm going to make sure it stays flat. So I've removed that clip for now so I can manipulate the zipper. You can just check to make sure that it didn't get caught weird or anything. Now before I move on and go and press this, I'm going to just put this to the side and I'm going to repeat that whole process for the second side here. So grab your other lining panel, again, I'm just going to clip this out of the way for now. I'm dropping clips everywhere. I'm going to line up the top corners. I would just rather do it this way than stop, sew one, change my stitch length, get up, go press. This just makes it a little bit easier for me. So get them both done. There we go. Now I'm going to sew that curved again, curved edge again, just like I did on the first panel. And my zipper here, I want to make sure it stays flat. So I will remove that clip once I'm getting close to there so I can maneuver that zipper without any issues. Alright, so keeping the zipper flat. edge all the way along. There we go. So 
now we have both the panels sewn with the zipper sandwiched in between. Now we need to flip this so that both the panels are now wrong sides together. And I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to press from the wrong side, not on the right side, from the wrong side. And I'm just using my fingers right now to go in there and push that top edge out. But we're just doing that so you can flip it to the wrong side and then give it a really good press with your iron. And if you're like me and you've used vinyl, you'll want to press from the wrong side on the lining side of your fabric. So both of them, they will be done that way. This here I'll have to be really careful, so I'm just going to just go along the edge of my, of my bag here. And then I'm going to add clips along the bottom just to make sure that I get it to hold in place until we're ready to continue stitching on the gusset and everything. So I'm gonna go off camera, I'm going to go press that, and then we'll come right back and continue on. Now that I've pressed those edges, and I've also added some clips around the bottom edges, as you can see here, there's clips. That's just holding my lining down to make sure it stays nice and smooth and tight for me while I top stitch. We're going to top stitch under this zipper where we just added it. However, there is a mark you need to make on both edges from the corner down for where we're going to start and stop top stitching from each edge. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for that. Once you have that mark made, you'll start top stitching where that mark is made and stop where the other mark is on the other side. And use your stitch length you like to use for top stitching. And if you have a hard time with curves, sewing around the curves, take it one stitch at a time. So one stitch, lift up your presser foot, pivot your fabric a little bit, put your presser foot down and take another stitch and do that all the way around and that'll help you get those nice, even, consistent stitches in that curve. Sometimes drawing your seam allowance on the curve also helps so that you can just stitch right along that curve on the seam allowance that you drew so that you can just follow it. Sometimes that helps too. So that's how it looks when it's top stitched. I'm going to repeat that for the other side here, for the other panel. Again, starting and stopping at that mark. And if you've never sewn curves, this really is a good bag to start sewing curves on because it's such a small curve that it's really very gentle and easy to stitch around. It's not such a tight curve like a circle would be. All right, so we've top stitched both the panels. They're both top stitched. Now we can put these to the side and I'm going to remove those clips. There's no reason to leave them on anymore because we're going to have to separate these when we attach the gusset. I just wanted it on for top stitching. I think I said gusset earlier, but I meant to say top stitching. I just like that it holds the lining down so I get a nice smooth lining underneath and I don't get any bulk or anything or any bumps or anything in my lining. So you can see it's nice and smooth on both of them. So just put those to the side for now. We are going to make our D-ring connector. And for that, we need these two small D-ring pieces. On the wrong side, down the entire length, you're going to draw a line in the center. Once you have that line drawn down the center, you can use some double-sided tape, either a thicker double-sided tape like I'm using or a thinner one on either side of the line. I'm using this thick, thicker one, so I'll just put it directly down the center. <clears throat> Remove the paper backing. Now we're going to fold those long edges in to meet that center mark. Just like that. So, oops, apparently I can't hold it. So you see both the long edges folded in to meet that center mark. Both my long edges. And 
Now we're going to top stitch these. And if you're using a webbing, you could just fold the webbing directly over, but I'm not using a webbing, so I now need to top stitch these. as soon as I'm done stitching this one. So I'm going to trim my threads. Again, if you've used a webbing for this, you can just fold the webbing. You'd skip all this part and you would just fold the webbing over your hardware. to grab our hardware. So you should have two D-rings. We're going to fold it so it goes over our D-ring just like that. So the short edges will meet. Place a clip. Just like that. And I'm going to baste those edges together, those short edges. And I'm just leaving it at my top stitch length just because it's not going to affect anything. It's just basting it together, so holding that together for me. I'll return my stitch length back to the length I like to use for constructing my bag. Now we need to grab our exterior gusset. So this piece here, which I have my Decoville Heavy attached to. And there's a mark on your uh, connector that you need to make from the bottom short raw edge down. And I've already made mine. I made it before I stitched them together and I can just barely see it. So I'm going to place this centered on the panel. So what that does is that makes your connector stick up off the edge of the gusset and that's what you want. You want some of that overhang. And then we're going to base these in place. So it's centered and basted it in place. they'll look when they're basted in place. They'll stick up off the edge that little bit and that'll just help add some extra security in the panel. So now the gusset is done. Now we need to grab back our main exterior panels that are attached to our lining panels and if you don't have it already attached we're going to add our zipper pull onto our zipper. And I'll just quickly do that now. Now, because I'm doing the option where the zipper doesn't go all the way to the ends, I'm doing the option for if you're using materials or that are thicker or if your machine can't handle thicker materials, your bag will look like this and it'll be in two pieces at this moment. Now, to ensure that you're installing your zipper pull correctly, what I like to do is pin the panels together so that they will be how it will be when the bag is completed. So just like that. You can take your zipper and put it together as if you have a zipper pull on it and then that's how you know that this is going to be oriented in the correct position when you go to install your zipper pull so you don't have it all twisted. And then you just add your zipper pull. 
I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for how I do this using this zipper helper here. So I will link that below if you need further instruction for how to put a zipper pull onto your zipper tape. So you just zip it closed. Check to see if it closes evenly. If it doesn't, what you can do is just take the pull back off the end here and then just keep retrying until you get it where it closes evenly like that. You can remove that clip and then that's how your bag is looking so far. So when you look inside, you see the lining and your zipper closes correctly. Now what we need to do is attach our gusset. So open up your panel. I'm going to clip my zipper tail down to one side for now, out of the way, just so that it doesn't get caught in the way when I'm clipping my gusset right now. So I'm just going to clip it out of the way. You can also, if you feel that it's better, unzip your zipper a little bit. You're going to take your gusset, and if you haven't already, mark the center point on your gusset and the center point on your main exterior panels because we're going to line up the center point on the gusset with the center point on the main exterior panels. Once you get that lined up, clip it in place, then continue adding clips all the way around. Now this is if you're doing the zipper with the zipper coming down in a little bit. If you're doing the other method, what you'll do is you'll place the gusset at the top, centering the main panel, the exterior main panel, with the center here of your gusset. So the zipper, because your zipper goes all the way to the end, will be centered with your tab here. And it'll be right in the center. The zipper teeth will be right here in the center of this tab. You'll clip it in place at the top, clip it all the way across, and then you'll sew that. But because we're doing this method, this is how I'm doing this. So I'm clipping it all the way around just to hold it in place. And then you'll notice you have a bit sticking up. Oops, I just broke a clip. You'll notice you have a bit sticking up off the edge here. So you want your lining out of the way. You're just clipping your exterior at this moment. And there's this little piece, this little triangle that sticks up off the edge. That is how you want it to look. And this is just to help you get it positioned correctly so we can sew it in place. So pin, pinning it all the way around. And if you find it easier when we do go to sew it, we will add some snips in the curves here to make it easier for when we do sew the gusset on. I'm not doing that yet because we're not actually sewing the gusset to the exterior panel at this moment. I'm just clipping this again to help find the position for where my exterior panel is going to line up with my top of my gusset here. So right here. So you'll notice that my gusset is right against, or not the gusset, sorry, the D-ring here is right against where my exterior is, and that's how you want it to be. Now what we can do is stitch across this using the seam allowance given in the pattern, and that's just going to tack that down. Make sure you move the lining out of the way. You don't want to sew through the lining right now. We're just sewing through the exterior. So it's just that small little amount that I've sewn through. So it's just the small amount here, sorry. So you'll notice I just sewed across the exterior here and it's just the small amount, not my lining piece. I pulled it out of the way. It's better if you see that way. So it's a small amount and that helps keep that lining free so I can move that around when I go to attach the gusset to the lining. So I'm going to repeat that on the other side. I'm going to move my lining out of the way and using the seam allowance, I'm going to sew across to attach that main panel to the gusset at the top. Make sure your hardware is not in the way as well. Now you can remove all those clips. We'll repeat that for the other side. And again, I know this seems a little bit wonky, but it's a good way to make sure that everything lines up accurately and correctly. So again, making sure that this exterior is not twisted, turn it back around and make sure your zipper is in the correct position. Clip your center points. 
and then continue clipping all the way around. Follow the curve at the bottom and get it all the way up to the top. And again, you'll have that little bit sticking up off the top edge. Oops. So just like that, I've just clipped it here at the top and that just lets me know that that's where it's supposed to be positioned and I'll stitch that in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So remember you have your other exterior already attached so you need to keep that out of the way. You need to move your lining out of the way and also make sure your hardware is not in the way. So a few things you need to ensure are not in your way as you're sewing this in place just a small little amount that you're sewing right now. Again, make sure your hardware is out of the way and that exterior on the other side and your lining. Again, if you were doing the other method, you would be able to sew right across, but because we have this in two pieces, because the zipper doesn't come all the way up, we have to sew it in two separate sections. But if you have the zipper attached to these two panels coming up all the way into this seam, you'll just sew straight across. And you won't need to clip it all the way around like I did. I mean, you could to ensure everything fits and it's accurate, but you don't have to because everything up here will line up but we need to make sure when we're doing it this way that this will all line up and it measures accurately and correctly because when we go to attach our, our lining gusset we want it to be all correct and you know what this isn't really sticking it's kind of hanging by a thread so I'm going to restitch this line up this line here line up the previous stitching hanging on by a thread. There we go. And your panel should line up where the, if you can see, my panels touch beside my D-ring connector. Now we need to repeat that for the, the lining, except we don't need to pin it all the way around again because now we know where it needs to line up at the top here with our exterior. So just line up the exteriors at the top. So these top short edges, we'll line them up, clip it in place. And it's going right side of the lining against the right side of the lining on your main panel, but also right sides against the right side of the exterior. So you're sandwiching that D-ring connector in between everything. And we're going to sew right across. It's going through the lining and the exterior here. And now that will close any gap that's left in the top as well. Because again, when you have the zipper going all the way to the top, the gap, there's no gap at the top because the zipper goes all the way to the top edge. So again, sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Make sure that D-ring is out of the way so you don't run it over with your needle. You 
want to make sure you keep everything as flat as you can too. So lined up. And I'm going to sew second row stitching on this side. Like you're fighting with it a little bit to get it to stay still. If you have to use lots of pins and clips to hold it in place, don't be afraid to do that. I should have sewn the second row stitching on this side too. And this is just for extra security, the second row stitching. So now it looks like this. And again, if your zipper is all the way at the top, you're going to have your zipper panel attached in here. You won't have this gap like we have here because my zipper didn't go all the way to the top. So, but that's how it'll look so far. So you see when we look from the lining side, there's no exterior or no hole here. And when you look at the exterior side, no hole there. So the lining attaches the bag and helps it not have a hole. Now we need to reclip the gusset all the way around the exterior again. So line up the center point on your gusset with the center point on your main panel. And this is where you can add those snips in the curves to help it ease in nicely for you. So you want us to make those snips within the seam allowance. Don't go higher than the seam allowance because then you'll have snips all the way out of the seam allowance and that cause your bag to come apart and fray. And I do find Decoville Heavy is a little bit harder to manipulate and get it to go where you want it to go because it is a stiffer interfacing so if you use that you may find you're fighting with it a little bit more I'm going to add those snips just in the curves here again within the seam allowance just to make sure that it eases through and I don't have any issues. Now this is where you may want to put on a zipper foot as well because remember we have that piping attached to that front or to the main panel sorry. So we need to get as close to that piping as we can for our seam allowance without stitching over the piping. So I'm going to switch to a zipper foot as soon as I'm done this. If you have a piping foot, you can also use a piping foot. A piping foot will help you get nice and close. So now we're going to stitch all the way around here using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So move your lining out of the way. We're not sewing through the lining. We're just sewing through the exterior gusset and the exterior main panel A piece. Make sure everything else is out of the way. Also your hardware, you don't want to hit that hardware. So make sure that is out of your way as well. zipper foot on I'm able to get right beside that piping without going over it because I can feel where the piping is as well but my foot is right against that piping Again, 
make sure when you come back up to the top here that your lining is out of the way, your lining gusset, and your hardware. You don't want to hit any of those. You can check it, so we can just turn it, check and see how it looks. that's how it looks so far. So we know it's good. If you have any puckers or anything that's something you don't want there, you can go and unpick your stitches. Just go be where the pucker is. So say the pucker is right here. Go back a bit, start unpicking your stitches, go past the pucker, then smooth it out. Use your clips to hold it in place. Then starting where you stopped unpicking the stitches, restart there, back stitch to lock in the previous stitches and lock in your new stitches. Go all the way around and then finishing back on top of the previous stitches and back stitch and that locks in all the stitches so nothing comes unstitched on you. So I'm just checking everything to make sure everything looks good. It does. And now we need to repeat that for the second side of the exterior. So line up my center points, making sure my lining is not in the way. And I find the second side a little bit harder to attach because now we have that first side there. So it makes it a little bit harder to maneuver everything. I'm going to clip this to the gusset here. Get that out of the way. Again, starting at the top, we will sew this in place after I make all my snips. And all these snips are doing are opening up those corners as you go around, so it causes the V's to open up so that it will lay flatter and be able to sew around the curve and not have any puckers. top, not sewing through your lining, make sure your D-ring is out of the way. hardware here. I don't want to sew over that. And that's how it's looking so far. We have the starting of at least the exterior of our bag. Now one thing I wanted to note, if you wanted, you don't have to use the Decoville Heavy here. You could use even just Decoville Light or foam depending on the structure of your bag. The Heavy does really make the bag stand up a little bit more. It gives it that extra firm structure. 
but if you find that working with Decoville Heavy is a little bit hard for you, you can definitely use Decoville Light or just foam. And I think somehow my zipper is twisted, so I'm going to have to fix that. got a little twisted. So I'm going to leave the pull off for now and fix it. That's the nice thing about the zipper tail. We can always readjust after. So I'm going to leave the zipper pull off for now. My zipper got twisted, I guess, when I attached the second panel. I didn't pay attention and I had that second side twisted. So now we need to repeat all that same process that we did for the exterior with the lining. But remember, we have this pocket here. So I'm just going to kind of smush the pocket sort of up into the zipper a bit, just like that, so it holds it in place. Take my gusset, and with the lining gusset and the main panel, line up the center points, and then the same thing we did with the exterior, clip it all the way around. You'll find this side a little bit easier because you don't have that extra interfacing to clip in or sew the foam and the Decoville Heavy. I find this a lot easier. And you'll sew this using the seam allowance again given in the pattern out. And you can make those little snips in the curves too. That just helps open up the seam when you're sewing around the curve. The only problem that you may have is coming up here to sew up here it might be hard because you have the exterior already attached here. So it might be hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to work my way up to there. And I'm going to do that on both sides. I find it's easier to go up towards the bulk than to start at the bulk and come away. So starting at that center mark. Oh yes, we need to make the snips first. Just like that. So again, starting in the center, I'm going to work my way up towards the side there where the exterior meets the lining. Just making sure I'm smoothing everything as I go. Now if you find it easier to go the opposite direction and start at the top and go down and around, you can definitely do that. Do whatever you're used to and most comfortable with. repeat that. Making sure, because our gusset right now, normally I don't sew with the gusset against the bed of my machine, but this time I am. So I'm making sure that gusset is flat and not in the way as well. top again here so I'm going to make sure everything's flat here and that d-ring is out of the way I actually have the d-ring I'm holding it here with my thumb this hand I've got it here hooked onto my thumb so I'm actually holding onto the d-ring and I'm not worried about trimming threads right now because they are inside where the bag is going to be closed but see how I have a hole here so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to close up that little hole as best I can. 
So what I'll do is I'll end up stitching a little bit of my exterior and my lining together, or sorry, my two linings together, and I might catch a bit of my exterior here, and that's okay. and now there's no more hole no holes at all so I'm going to go off camera sew the second set of the lining because you've already watched me sew the two exteriors and the two linings so I'm going to go off camera sew the second lining to the bag so same thing we just did there you can start in the middle work your way up because again it is easier to come up towards this bulk here than it is to come down away from it at least I find if you find it easier to just sew all the way around do what you find easiest to do. So I'm going to go off, I'm going to sew that second side, and then I'll come back and we will continue on. Also, before I continue on, I forgot to mention, once you have this all clipped, don't forget to leave an opening in the bottom here so that we can turn our bag through that opening after. There is the opening in the pocket, but we're going to pull the bottom through the pocket after, close the bottom up, and then close up the zipper pocket. So don't forget to leave an opening in the bottom here of your lining. Okay, so I've sewn the second side and it kind of looks like a bit of a hot mess right now, but it'll all work out in the end. Now we need to turn the bag right sides out through this opening we left here in the bottom. And you're really gonna have to squish if you're using Decoville Heavy in that bottom. This is always the hardest part for me. wasn't too bad because that opening I left nice and big. And again, I did take that pull off because my zipper got a little bit twisted. And I'm just making sure everything, oops, is coming out nicely. Try not to pull too much, you don't want to break any stitches. Try pushing instead. And if you find that there's a lot of bulk up here in this top area where the D-ring is, you can trim that a little bit. I'm just sort of maneuvering it out. I just kind of maneuvered it out of there. So I'm going to use my turning tool to poke out that corner and I might trim that down a bit because there is a lot of bulk here and I don't really like it how it's sitting. So I gotta kind of push that back. So I'm going to trim where these little corners, see these little corners here when we attached our gusset to our exteriors and linings? I'm just going to trim those little corners. Do not trim your D-ring at all. Don't trim your D-ring connector. You want to leave that because what that does is that adds extra stability and security to keep it, ow, keep it attached. But I've just clipped there so that we've removed some of that bulk. Just be careful, again, cut your D-rings, or your D-ring connector, sorry. And that just helps, oh, it makes a big difference. <coughs> Excuse me. And using a turning tool, you can really get those areas pushed out, so you get them nice And then I'm going to turn this side again so it is back through and trim those little, I guess we can call them little ears. Again, don't trim that D-ring connector. 
Only those little triangle bits. It does make a difference, I promise. It helps. Everything pushed nice and flat inside your bag. This is where I'm just checking everything as well because now is the time before you close any openings to make sure that your bag is the way you want it to look when you're done. Make sure that there's no puckers. I mean, look how beautiful this bag looks already. You can see my. Um, way the color shift on this bag. I love it. It's beautiful. All right. So I'm very happy with how that's looking so far. You have your connectors here on the sides. I've trimmed it so that I'm able to pull those connectors out and no holes here either. This is what you want to make sure that there's no holes here on your linings. So on either side, if there's holes, bring those back through and just restitch. You can even hand stitch them if you're finding that you can't get them closed. So now we need to close the bottom opening. So there's my opening in my pocket. I'm going to grab the bottom and I'm going to pull it through the opening in the pocket. And then add some clips. Can you believe we are almost done with this portion of the bag? This is the exciting part. Add some clips and then we'll just sew straight across. And you're sewing using the seam allowance that you used when you sewed the lining and gusset. about my threads there won't be any peekaboo threads because it's in the bottom of my bag so now that bottom opening because we closed it that way you'll never know that we left an opening in the bottom like that <coughs> excuse me again <laughs> now we need to close the bottom in our pocket and to do that pull your pocket bottom out just like this and you're going to turn it or fold it under and you can take this to your iron if you prefer and press it. I'm just going to, I just often like to do that just to kind of press it with the edge of my table. It just gives it a little crease. Then I add my clips all the way across and then we'll sew this opening closed. So all the way across to sew this opening closed now. Now I don't need to have my zipper foot on anymore. I'm going to actually switch back to my regular foot because I will need that when we construct the strap, the final steps in making this bag. machine because it's in the pocket and I figure most people won't see it and it's never really terrible looking even if they do. So the pocket is now closed. Push it into the bottom. Get it nice and flat. Get, up, get your, your lining all in there nice and flat. Zip up the zipper pocket. And the nice thing about my zipper pocket is it's closing in the same direction that my bag is going to close. Now I need to put back on my zipper pull, so I'll do that. I'll do that when I go off camera, when I go to install um, some rivets later, because I will use rivets. Um, so I'm just going to put this off to the side. 
because I don't need you to watch me install that zipper pocket again. The other thing I'm going to do when I'm done this final bag and I go to do my final pressing is I'll actually use a rubber mallet to kind of hammer this seam down a little bit flat here because the, there is still bulk there but I want to hammer it down so it's nice and flat so that when we're using the bag it doesn't sort of stick out like that. You may not need to if you've done this with the zipper going all the way, the, way to the end but I feel that I need to do that for this part because we don't have the zipper going all the way to the end and it's kind of seen with the bag, it'll be seen a little bit more, and I just want it to be a little bit flat. I see some threads here that I missed trimming. There we go. But I mean, I'm loving how this is looking so far. It's such a beautiful bag. A nice little bag, you could really use this for any, if you have a fancy occasion you have to go to, or maybe if you have an event coming up like a wedding, you could use it for a wedding bag. You can make it in any color you want, any material. It's a really pretty bag. Even something casual, you can make it out of quilting cotton and just have a really fun casual bag. Excuse me. Now we're going to make our tassel. And on the tassel, there's a mark that you need to make from the top edge down. So I've already done that because from that top edge down that mark, that's where you're gonna stop cutting these slits here. But I've already made my slits, so you'll want to refer to the pattern for how to make those slits. So you make a mark from the top down and then you cut the slits all the way up to that line. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for where those slits get made. Now we need to take this, and I'm just going to take out my hardware. Now your hardware may look a little bit different And you'll definitely want to refer to your manufacturer's instructions for installing it. But for mine, this is how I do it. So in the pattern, she has you rolling this all up. <laughs> Add a little dab of glue. That glue is just going to help hold that in place. And then you just take this piece and you insert it inside your tassel. And the nice thing is, is some of my glue I squished out the top, so that'll actually hold it in there as well because it's stuck to the top piece, but that's how it's looking so far. Now take your screw and we're going to screw it in place. Again, you may have different hardware. So definitely refer to your manufacturer's instructions for your hardware. And it's not really screwing through it. So what I'm going to do, usually it cuts into the material and it's not this time. I'm going to use my awl sort of poke through, all the way through, and that just creates a little hole for this to grab into and get into. There we go. And the nice thing too is again, that glue is in there, so it's holding everything in place too. my all up in the center and I sort of shimmy things around. There we go. Look how cute that looks so far. And my hardware already has the chain and the clip attached. You'll want to, if yours doesn't, add your little chain to your hardware, uh, the tassel cap, and then add your little D-ring or swivel hook to the hardware as well so that yours looks like this and it can hang from your bag. So that's how that's done. So we'll put that to the side for now. We have this cute little tassel. <laughs> now we need to make our strap. Sorry, that was loud. So we need to grab our strap, our hardware for our strap, 
and our strap connectors. Now, you're going to be adding a piece of exterior material to the center of your shoulder strap connectors and you're going to glue them. I'm using, I don't even know what this is called, it's just like a hard or a tougher um, tape, but it's good for when you're using it in straps and stuff, it helps add strength to the straps. So that's what I'm going to use instead of the exterior fabric. My scissors are all full of gunk. So they're not really cutting very well. There we go. And I'm just going to trim it down a bit because it's too wide. I like using this when I'm doing straps because it adds that extra strength there. And that's all you're doing with adding the exterior material in there is you're just adding strength in that area because you're going to have a D-ring hooked in there. So you just want that extra strength. This tape is me. Some extra strength in that area. That tape is fighting me. And I don't know where this was purchased from because this was sent to me as a gift. And I'm very grateful for it because I've used it a lot. It's just a tape that you use in your straps or anything like this that adds that extra strength. And it's really strong. Like I can't even pull it apart like regular tape or anything. It's really, really strong. Now you're going to, so once you have your exterior material or anything that you're using in there attached, you're going to slide your swivel hook onto the strap connector. So it'll look just like that. So the D-ring piece is going to slide through. So the swivel hook side is going to be on the right side of the strap connector. So just like that. <laughs> Excuse me, my nose is running now because I sneezed so much. Now, we have our little strap here. So we need to take this and we need to attach it inside the strap connector. And it'll tell you, she tells you how far you're going to go in to the strap connector. And I didn't mark that. So thankfully, I've got a little ruler here off camera that I can use really quick. To mark where it's going to go so you'll want to refer to that measurement and I'm going to use some double-sided tape as well to help hold the strap in place so that while I sew it it doesn't move on me so double-sided tape there Put my strap up to where that mark is and it's centered as well. Now you want to line up this second side with the top edge of the strap connector and the side edges as well. You want everything all nicely lined up so it'll look just like that. All nicely lined up. So get everything all lined up. And for these strap connectors, you have to use a non-fraying material so that it doesn't fray on you after time. You can also use an edge paint or like edge, to, um, the, the paints that you can get to edge coat this. And if you're really worried about fraying, you can add some fray stop or fray check if you're worried that it is going to fray and you're not using edge paint. So now we're going to sew around this entire piece using the seam allowance given in the pattern and getting as close to your hardware as your presser foot will allow. And if you want, you can switch to a zipper foot because you'll get nice and close with the zipper foot. getting close to the hardware here so I've pivoted now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back stitch along this edge just for extra security if you've watched my other tutorials I'm all about extra security so here because we're close to the hardware coming back this way will actually make your presser foot jump off and it may give it a skip stitch so what I like to do is I like to go backwards for a bit then turn 
when my presser foot, if you can see here, my presser foot now is not on top of my hardware. It's in front of the hardware or behind. And I'm back up at the top, so I'm just going to back stitch across the top too for some extra security. going to add, ow, I keep hitting my elbow. I'm going to add a rivet here just because I like the way the rivet looks, but look at how pretty that looks so far. I love how it looks. It's so pretty. So now we're going to repeat that for the second side. Again, using your double-sided tape, you want to place some double-sided tape. That just helps hold the strap, the strap in place while you sew it. Get it centered right on that line. excited to finish this bag, I won't lie. Now I'm going to sew all the way around. Same method that I used the last time and I'm going to back stitch across the bottom and across the top just for that extra security. So here I am near the hardware, I'm going backwards, back across, and then now I'm going to go backwards here. And see my presser foot now is out of the way of the hardware. how that side looks. Now I'm going to install rivets off camera but I wanted to finish showing you. Actually you know what I'm going to go install my rivets. Rivets are not needed they're not mandatory but I am going to just install some and then I'm going to put my zipper foot or my zipper pull back onto my zipper and I'm also going to add my zipper cap and the end of the zipper here, the zipper end, I'm also going to add that onto my bag. And when you add your zipper end, you want to follow your manufacturer's instructions. So when I get back, I'll have rivets on my strap, my zipper end and my zipper pull on, and we will continue on with adding the hardware, how it should be added. So I've installed the zipper ends and I've also installed the rivet. So my zipper and zipper end. So that's the zipper end here that I've used. So it stops your zipper from coming off the end of your bag. You can tuck that tail down into the bag or have it stick out, whatever you prefer. I also used my mallet and hammered those sides here just so it flattens it out a little bit. And as I mentioned, I put a rivet in. That's not part of the pattern. It's just something I wanted to add. It just gives a bit of extra security through the strap. Now, final steps are to attach this strap. Oops, I just dropped something. To attach this chain here. So we need to attach it to our D-ring and you'll need a pair of pliers to be able to open up your links on your chain so I've already got some open here because I had to take this apart from another chain and hook it on to your D-ring. Oops. And I'm wondering if this is not going to be big enough to get around. I don't think it's going to be. I think I might have to go with a different chain because I don't think that's going to be big enough to get around and be able to move around on the bag. It's not. So I'm just going to pause the camera. I'm going to get a different chain because this one is not going to be big enough to reach around my D-ring. Thankfully I do have another chain. I was more worried about it being heavier on the bag but I think that's what I need to be able to 
fit around my hardware here. So I'm going to go grab that other chain and I'll come back and we'll attach that chain. Sorry about that. All right, so I've got a bigger chain, meaning the links are bigger than the chain I was previously trying to use. So that means they'll be able to wrap around that D-ring, no problem. And I've got two of the links opened up because I need to get it off the chain. So you just hook this onto your D-ring, just like that. And then using your pliers, gently close it back up. And I may have to have my husband help with this. We'll see. I'm going to use both of these and just push them towards each other. to be the hardest part I'm sure of the whole bag is just pushing these together there we go got it pushed together a little bit not quite enough though oh here we go the link a bit too much and now I can't get it closed. I'm going to open another link to pull that one out because I'm scratching it and I don't like that. I'm just going to open another link. So all I do is I just carefully find where the opening is and I just use my pliers and I carefully open them. Oops. There we go. Just pulling it apart a little bit. Just enough so that I can get that onto the D-ring. So try not to pull it too far apart. There we go. Of course, this is the hardest part of the whole bag. it's just these pliers don't oh yeah it is they don't open wide enough but I'm forcing them to open a bit more there we go Whew. that was a workout now we'll try the other side and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and push these together first Got that stuck on my finger. No, that's not going to work. All right, we're going to do the same thing. And if this part is boring to you, you can just fast forward. So do the same thing, open them up. You know what, I think I will pause the camera after I get this opened up. I'm going to stop, I'm going to pause the camera, I'm going to open it up just that little bit and then I'm going to bring it to this other side and attach it to this side, just as I did here and close it up. So I'm going to do that and come right back. So I've attached that chain to the D-rings and something I had forgot to mention that I usually do is add a piece of fabric between the chain link and my um, pliers so that I don't scratch my my links. I forgot to mention that so I actually went back and removed the links I was trying to open up because they were scratched and added a new one instead, used a new one so that it's not scratched. But again, I just put some fabric between, some scraps of fabric. You can even use scraps of foam or whatever you want before 
you use your pliers to pull them apart so that you don't scratch it. One thing I have done in the past when I have used pliers and forgotten to use the fabric between the pliers and the hardware is I take a, a file and I buff it down and I just buff it so it's shiny again and get rid of any of the teeth marks that have been left by the pliers but usually I just put the fabric between and I try to remember that. So that's how that looks. Now we need to attach our little tassel. So you just attach, attach it like that. You can attach it under your chain or over it however you want. The nice thing is, is the chain can be taken off, put on. It's really the wearer's choice. Attach your strap and there it is. Your bag is all complete. It is ready to take it out and show it off to the world. However, before you do that, don't forget to take pictures of your bag and share it on social media using the hashtags given in the pattern and also in the Facebook group so we can all ooh and ah at your beautifully made bag. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and maybe picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. Thank you for sewing for me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye and happy sewing.